approached the celebration 30 years of what I always say was the game changer for Brisbane, that is World Expo 1988. Part of my time in City Hill was Expo, and another important part was the signing of Brisbane's first sister city relationship. Now that I didn't know. No, oh, there you go. See, you learn something new every day. Um, about, about him and about the sculpture and, and about Expo 88 because, um, as Jeanette has said, it was an event that defined Brisbane in many ways. It would be sad to think that it was the only event that defined Brisbane, but it was an important part of our growing up. Um, and certainly if you think the word, do I tug the cloth? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You have to pretend. As well as chief protagonist of World Expo 88, here standing on my right hand side, uh, James McCormick, MBE, OAM. direction, and um, I just, to be honest, I don't know how you ever slept at night. Well, I probably averaged four or five hours sleep only during the whole five years of development. But, um, but my job as chairman and chief executive of the exposition board, which was under the Queensland state legislation, um, gave to me not only enormous privilege and opportunity to be a leader in that area of the development of the site and so forth and the operations of the expo, uh, but also gave it was a great privilege to work with some remarkable people. Um, Anyone else would have a, a striking recollection of uh, Times Square and the centrepiece uh, from that particular uh, part of Expo being uh, Morningstar. And I just wondered if you'd just uh, quickly give us a couple of reflections of that, uh, that wonderful neon paradise. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, the great features of Expo AEA was that it was really two Expos. It was a daytime Expo and a night Expo. And that is unusual because generally expos have been held in the summer in areas that are with, say you've got not really a nighttime expo. Um, and Brisbane was, was a unique in that extent. And this is a classic example of something that was great during the day, but it was absolutely spectacular at night. And it really came to life. It, 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 it was. That was what the, what made it. Um, so we've got the to department uh, at the title of under treasurer, and I've been there nearly 14 years as under treasurer. And uh, so therefore I was very, very aware that the uh, extra had to be uh, performed uh, financially mm. soundly because if it, whatever we missed out on, I had to find the cash for, I guess. That's right. And uh, the, the gentleman who helped me in the determination of whether we have expo or not was a man from, it was the head of the Premier's Department, uh, Sir Sidney Schubert. So Sid and I were the two bureaucr state bureaucrats that finally convinced the government to proceed with the expo. And the brain trust really. Along with, and there's another fellow in that little story as well, uh, David Graham. David Graham uh, did a lot of work before we had come to those conclusions, uh, convincing us that uh, it was a financially viable proposition to put the expo on. Yes. And David's figures showed us that we could uh, could do that, and we would be. And he did the detailed figures of telling us what we could be able, able to charge the expo. Uh, a promise of support back around 1976. Right. About 77, that um, the businessmen of, uh, of, um, of Brisbane were brought together to show what an expo could be really all about, and yes. how it would how it was developed in other cities before that. Right. So uh, Tom Burrell had a very important role to play in those early years. And um, and later on there was some discussion also with uh, Sir Frank Moore of the Queensland Travel and Tourist Corporation as well. How did he become involved? I, I have no idea, frankly. I, I should know, but I don't. But to my surprise, suddenly, Frank, Sir Frank was involved. And I thought to myself, isn't this great? He's such an important businessman. Mm. Uh, running the Tourist and Travel Corporation, um, what an asset really that is. So I just, but I introduced myself to him and he said, Jim, you're doing a tremendous job and thanks very much for all you've done, but uh, you know, I'm going to give you as much support as I can.